Hi, this is Kerry Artek with Wicked Stocks, bringing you in-depth video analysis of the NASDAQ 100 ETF, the Triple Q, for Tuesday, June 20th, 2023. At wickedstocks.com, we provide daily analysis on the SPY and Triple Q in the same format you see in Tesla and Apple every day on YouTube. And today, we're thrilled to share an important milestone we've reached, a community of 20,000 subscribers on YouTube. This exciting journey and growth at Wicked Stocks would not have been possible without you, our dedicated YouTube subscriber. And so as a token of our appreciation for your support, we're not only offering you our daily Triple Q report on YouTube for Tuesday, June 20th, but also giving you an exclusive opportunity to become a member of WickedStocks.com with a 20% off discount. At WickedStocks.com, we deliver daily analysis in the SPY and Triple Q, along with weekly analysis in the S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, and the long bond ETF, the TLT, and also two individual stock picks every week you never see on YouTube that cater to the three to five week longer term swing trader to the three to five month near term investor. Simply use the code WICKED20 to get 20% off your first month. Once again, thanks for being the bedrock of Wicked Stocks. It's your support that inspires us to provide you directional clarity in a wide range of actively traded markets. Let's jump to the charts. I'll start with, you know, I think I can use the daily chart because I do have some big picture uh, formations here. And uh, I do have this on the weekly chart as well on this downloadable PDF format that we provide on the website for free. I don't know if you know that or not, if you're watching uh, this, um, if you're not aware of the fact that you can download this newsletter, uh, this a PDF form that allow you to rifle through all of these charts, take a look at these support and resistance levels. Anyway, enough of that. Um, so I'm going to walk back about, uh, well, actually, I'm going to go back to the weekly chart because I need to count the number of weeks. I think it was four weeks ago that, yes, we closed above the 336.55 long-term channel top that uh, indicated a few things to me. One was uh, a good low for the year. Um, also, uh, the resumption of a long-term bull market, descending flag that 336.55 represented at the top of a long-term high, uh, which is the case. Uh, typically, um, if settled above, does indicate the resumption of a long-term bull move, expecting at least a retest of the 408.71 high and probably onto new all-time highs, quite possibly by the end of the year, the way things are playing out. Now, we did close above this formation on the weekly chart all week at 336, sorry, 363.70. I have it as a minor point only because last week, as you recall, I did switch to just the daily versions of we have the same chart on the daily chart at 367.09 that we find at 363.70 on the weekly chart, that previous slide. We also have an intermediate channel structure at 364.80. Now, we settled above both of them earlier last week. They are holding now for the last several days. 364.84 to 367.09, a narrowing range of support, able to contain weekly selling pressures, and above which secondary bullish momentum remains intact. I'm going to take us back to this chart here to show you that uh, I think over the next week or two, 382.77 in reach, um, holding above 367.09, I could draw a horizontal line across to show you this 382.77. You know, scanning the chart, sometimes you lack the line studies, the Fibonacci retracement levels. Uh, you really are sort of relegated to taking a look at old high and low areas. What I like about 382.77, if I could zoom in, uh, or if you were to zoom in, you would see that it's a consolidated pattern that lasted for over a week, almost two weeks. And the, there were a number of highs in the 382 handle. The 382.77 level is the highest it reached before falling off in a significant way for about a month, month and a half before you're pushing onto that new all-time high at 408.71. November of 21. So 382.77, just a two-star resistance level, able to contain two to three-day highs when tested. So let's work upside from 367.09, that level that can contain weekly selling pressures. And once again, secondary buying pressures remain intact. Uh, bullish momentum firmly intact. An increasingly vertical market is the scenario here. Now, 371.83, there's a level that was also a significant pullback high going back to April of 22. It has roughly contained daily buying pressure. I mean, yes, we did open above it last Friday uh, and quickly fell below it closing below it. We've yet to close above it. So 371.83 is still a decent day trade level. May contain daily buying pressures. We could trade inside the 367.09 to 371.83 area all day. If we push through 371.83, 377.47 
is in reach today. And if we close above 371.83, the 38277 level, likely within, at this present volatility rate, within two to three days, where we could actually top out through the balance of the week. And once again, closing above 382.77 should yield that 408.71 objective within another uh, two to three weeks. This 408.71 level may now be in reach by the end of August. I'm kind of guessing like over the next couple of months, if this market continues in this sort of increasingly hyperbolic vertical rate, I could certainly see this by the end of August perhaps. Holding above 364.84 to 367.07, once again, these levels uh, that I can show here, holding above this area does maintain bullish momentum as we move into July. So keep that in mind. Uh, now, uh, so I guess I could finish with what to do. Um, you know, this was considered an objective. I'm going to back up just a little bit. That was considered a two to three week target, as you recall, uh, when we closed above the 336.55 area. This formation did contain highs for a couple of weeks before we took it out last week. So this is a secondary, you know, buy signal. And um, you may have taken some profits here if you bought out of the money calls at that time. If you're kind of a two to three week swing trader, that would have been the thing to do. Hopefully you still have some of them. Uh, and in certain having closed above the 364.84 to 367.09 region last week um, maintains that bullish momentum. And, you know, you could reach for 405, 410 uh, out of the money calls that don't expire for at least three months. That was the play anyway, but more like six months out uh, when we settled above 336.55. So that is kind of, you know, the big picture to the upside. There is, of course, the what if, what if we close back below 364.84 today? Well, if we break 364.84, I want to show you this chart here, kind of an opened up chart. Is 359.30 in reach if we break 364.84? Potentially, that would be quite a sell-off today, and it may happen. So if we break, especially if we open below 364.84, that would be a significant gap lower. 359.30 certainly in reach. And I'm going to call this just a daily containment level, well-suited for aggressive day traders. But in terms of trend-defining support, over the last two or three weeks, we do have a rising channel bottom presently at 354.83. And so if we settle below 364.84, this former channel top, still an actual channel top, but we're above it now, if we close back below it, that is a sign uh, of an overbought market. Now, is it a fabulous sell signal that you can jump on for the next few weeks? Not so fast. I mean, it may ultimately play out that we fall back into the 330s long-term support again, which I'll show again in a moment. But I think really what it means, if we close below 364.84, it's a solid three to five day swing trade to the downside where I'm expecting the 354.83 uh, rising channel bottom. I'm going to call this a weekly support level, able to contain weekly selling pressures. What I like about 354.83 is over the next few days, it also lines up nicely with this former high area here. I think that was 357.49, this high area here. It actually lines up with it over the next couple of days. So if we test 354.83, and it would be considered a three to five day target if we close today below 364.84, the 354.83 form able to contain weekly selling pressures, and that could possibly then, re, re, you know, result in bullish rotation back to new highs. I mean, after all, we are still in a longer term a buy signal. So these, you know, short term sell signals uh, have a way of not fully playing out in the midst of that sort of longer term updraft that exists, you know, above this 336.55 area. So, um, you know, if we close back below 364.84, which is the same formation on the daily chart that we find on the weekly chart at 363.70, uh, then I'm going to jump to this chart one more time to underscore that 359.30 is in reach within a day or two. And over the next several days, three to five days, 354.83, where we could bottom out through next week and perhaps push on to new highs following that test. And the truth is, not unless we close below 354.83 would I then, and that level is rising daily, would I then anticipate a possible retest of 336.55? And I'm going to actually go to a daily chart on that because the uh, daily chart is 336.54. And there's a new rising long-term one-third speed line now at 333.83 that is based in part on last Friday's high, taking into account the extremes October low against last Friday's high. This formation, this line study will remain in effect as long as that high from last Friday, 372.85, is uncontested. 
In other words, if we fall off from here to the downside, this will remain a valid line study, trend defining, and uh, it converges nicely with this long-term channel top. So if we were to test it over the next three to five weeks, and I don't expect it. <laughs> I don't know how many times I need to say that. Um, uh, I don't expect it unless we close below 354.83. And this will, level will actually rise at a nice pace, pushing into the 360s over the next week. And so it will become a decent play to the downside, even in and of itself. If we were to close below this formation, it would at some point perhaps offer a decent two to three week sell signal back into the 330s. You know, I don't know what else there is to say besides being overly repetitious. I've repeated all of the notions at least several times. I think I'm going to leave it at that. I will remind you all the minor points are very tradable for aggressive day traders. Um, and um, that's all I've got actually for Tuesday's Daily Triple Q. You have a great day.